I'm David from Levica Photography and today we are talking about uh, color calibration and this is part three in my series of color calibration. In the first video we talked about uh, the color science in cameras and the lack thereof and the reason why we have to calibrate. In the second video I talked about monitor calibration and showed you how to calibrate your monitor uh, getting it to the most accurate level that you possibly can and uh, that way you can see exactly what's coming off of your camera. And now in this video I am going to explain what the camera sensors are doing from each manufacturer. Uh, that way you can see uh, why and how we need to correct what we're doing. In the next video I'll get into actual correction, but I think it's important to see what sensors are doing before we do this. That way you can see how important it is. So anyway, let's go ahead and dive in here. So I borrowed these images from imageresource.com and Image Resource is one of my favorite review sites and they do really good uh, camera body reviews and the simple fact that they actually do these color tests on sensors. Now I don't know of anybody else that does it so I really appreciate the fact that they do it. The only problem is they're always kind of behind. So what you're not going to see in this video is the uh, uh, Nikon Z7 or Z6 uh, but we've got some other current cameras in here and just to show you this is the camera that I'm currently using this will kinda give you a baseline of how bad each camera actually is in the real world so this is my A7R3 and basically how to read this is we've got mean camera chroma saturation and so you'll see it equals 112.2% Basically what that means is that the camera is oversaturating 12.2%. Now over here is the ideal. That's the square boxes that you see here. This is uh, the actual swatches off the chart and these are where everything should be. And then what you're seeing in the round circles are how far off the camera actually is trying to shoot that. And uh, in the center, you'll see that the A7R3, this is where the grayscale area happens. And so from uh, black to white and all of the uh, hues in between, basically on the white side, the A7R3 is pretty good. But as you're going towards black, everything seems to go towards the kind of bluish magenta side. And you'll see that the blues are slightly off and uh, the reds are slightly off, the oranges are slightly off, the yellows are slightly off and this is what gives Sony kind of its funky yellows that people talk about and you can see it here because it's pushing the yellows more towards kind of a darker yellow green and then the greens are a little brighter going towards the yellow side and then the uh, darker greens are pushing more towards cyan kind of and then the tones in here when you get into this area are more natural tones and where they should be so you'll see that the the browns is what I call them but those are actually pretty close and then the uh, the darker greens that are like you know the dead foliage that sort of thing they're still a little too vibrant but this is pretty standard, you know, it's, it's not like the A7R 3 is way off or anything. This is actually kind of normal. So this is the Sony A7 III, and you'll see that it shifts. Let me go back to the A7R 3 and then back again, and you'll, sh you'll see the shift. And the Sony A7 III definitely shifts the reds more. Uh, but really everything else, it's not that bad. It's pretty pretty easy to fix and it's 10.8 percent oversaturated which is kind of on the low side believe it or not uh, it seems like when cameras are oversaturated they're from somewhere around 10 all the way to 20 so somewhere in between there the lower the number the better uh, and I have a feeling that even though this is Sony's typical color space it's because we're dealing with uh, larger pixels because it's 24 megapixel instead of 42. So anyway, skip ahead here. This is the 5DSR. This is the camera that I just got rid of when I was shooting artwork. And you can see that even though it's 12.2% oversaturated, it actually does a very good job 
in some of these outer areas it's not pushed nearly as bad and this will make more sense in a minute but you can see how camera put or how Canon pushes its reds and its oranges and then its yellows are slightly shifted over but it's the the grayscale that's kind of the problem on this camera so it's nowhere near center and it's actually pushing more towards the bluish magenta zone and the blues are slightly off so but it's actually fairly easy to calibrate it's not that bad the problem that I had with the 5DSR is it just doesn't have the dynamic range that the A7R 3 does so there's a lot of vibrant colors that it just can't capture because it's just kind of out of its spectrum now here's the EOS R and this is probably the newest camera in the lineup and you'll see that it's really really pushing the reds out here a lot and even though its total saturation is down a little bit it's shifting the reds oranges and yellows a lot but the greens are actually pretty good and the blues aren't bad at all it's just getting that back to where it kind of needs to be and here uh, from white to black your gray tones are actually not bad they're still slightly on the magenta side but closer to center than most cameras I've seen so far the Nikon D850 now this is a camera that's always kind of baffled me as far as color balance goes because it seems like it does a really good job and then it doesn't when you're using it and uh, so you'll see that the the mean camera chroma saturation is 114.7 percent or 14.7 percent oversaturated so a lot of times turning down the saturation actually brings this back to normal now the great thing about the D850 is the center of it the white to black the grayscale toning is very accurate but it's the blues that go way off the rails over here and these are really hard to get back to where they're supposed to be so this camera is actually kind of tricky to calibrate to get it really accurate on the blue side um, and you can see that here it's really obvious now the Fuji X Pro 2 Fuji's got a very in my opinion the most neutral uh, color balance out of everybody the white to blacks are really almost in the center it does a really good job the darker you get in the uh, grayscale range it starts to go to the blue side and you'll see it pushes the reds and the oranges and the yellows just a little bit but yellow is pretty much where it's supposed to be the greens are pretty close to where they're supposed to be and the blues are pretty close to where they're supposed to be this is a very easy camera to color calibrate Fuji GFX because it's a larger sensor I think they're just pushing it more and you can see that it's 13.2 percent oversaturation oversaturated and it's also pushing the reds the oranges and the and the orangey yellows quite a bit but the regular yellow is dead on and again your grayscale is going more towards the magenta kind of bluish side now this is where things go haywire this is the Pentax 645Z and this thing is way oversaturated and the reason why I believe that this camera is oversaturated is I've played with this camera in the past and rented it a few times and I've always liked it but I think it's really designed more around shooting landscapes than it is anything else it's not really meant to be a studio camera it's really meant to be outside and it likes um, oversaturating a lot and it's very hard to calibrate because it's overdoing everything so much uh, but when you're shooting landscapes everything looks really pleasing so I, I think that's what they had in mind when they designed it it wasn't actually like meant to be in the studio and then this is the OMD EM1 Mark II Micro Four Thirds this is the camera that I use quite often and you'll see that this camera is actually really close to where everything should be except the reds are just pushed a little bit your whites are going to be really white and then as you go down the the grayscale curve it's going to push a little to the kind of bluish side again um, pretty typical and common but very easy to calibrate uh, this this camera once it's calibrated I think does a really good job but anyway it's 11.1 percent oversaturated which is fairly normal now this is the Panasonic G9 and the G9 to me is Panasonic's photography camera uh, the G5 is more to geared towards video but the G9 is really their photo camera and 
you can see here that it's actually fairly color accurate. It pushes the blues quite a bit, it pushes the reds and the oranges a little bit, and the yellows to me are kind of way off. But very easy to dial in, and its saturation is only 9.3%, so that's actually pretty good. So this is what cameras in general just kind of look like, and it seems like everybody's just off. There's nobody that's like the most accurate camera on the planet. It just doesn't exist. So these are the color charts that we calibrate to. And this is what we're going to be doing in the next video is I'm going to show you how to do these. So on the left you've got the spider checker and on the right you've got the x right color checker. And just so you guys know, the chart that's actually on the right side of each of these is the exact same chart. It's not any different. And you'll notice that they have the exact same colors in them. And if I rotate this really quick, just so they're kind of on the same side, you'll see that they both have the same exact colors in them. They're just in a different order. It's really not that big a deal. So either one of these charts works just fine. There isn't one that works better than the other, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I personally prefer the x uh color checker just because of this very faint white balance chart. I think this is actually really kind of handy for dialing in. But uh, yeah, they use the same exact color chart. Now, unfortunately, we can't really dial the cameras in to be more color accurate internally in the camera. You, you can kind of tweak them a little bit, but it takes a lot of work. And you got to have that Imatest actual software to be able to see what you're doing to dial it in if you're just trying to get the camera to be more color accurate. But the problem is, a lot of the cameras nowadays have more AI built into them. So they're going to color shift a little bit from scene to scene anyway, uh, just because they're going to fight themselves to get back to where they need to be. So shooting with a color checker under controlled lighting and then calibrating all your f photos against that uh, will give you more accurate and consistent results. So that's what we're doing in the next video. So this is the standard 24 that I just showed you, and these are what the test goes against. And it's a color rendition chart. And then this is the digital color checker SG. And this is the 48 color that you can get from x -Rite. And the funny thing is, I got this thing, and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be so much more accurate because there's so much more information. Truth is, when you use these gigantic color charts, they're great for checking against your printer. But in reality, that's the actual square that they use, which is in the same on the last two charts I just showed you, it uses the same exact area with the same exact layout to actually calibrate the sensor. So there is no advantage to going to the full chart, uh, which is actually kind of a bummer. I wish that they would, but that means that the uh, Delta C color test has to be updated in order to be able to utilize this whole thing. But anyway, going back to what the charts that you just looked at against the color checker, this is actually what's happening. So this will kind of give you a better idea of what's going on. And just so you know, on this one, I believe it's the lower uh, right on all of these that it's actually supposed to be calibrating to, and the upper left is actually what this particular sensor is doing. I don't know what sensor this is off of. I just pulled it off the net. But I thought it was perfect because it has this in there so you can see what exactly is going on against the color chart. And that, that's the reason why digital cameras drive me nuts is because they can't just be set towards being 100% accurate. They have to be set towards making skin tones look better and calming the sky down so that way the sky looks more vivid and your landscapes look better and things look more HDR and crap like that those things drive me nuts. But anyway, this is what you have to calibrate against, so this just kind of ties everything together. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. The links are in the description if you guys want to get these color calibration charts to be able to do your own calibration. And uh, I guess that's about it. So, you know, I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel for more information like this. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya.